Hey everybody, we're back chatting with PGA professional Wyatt Worthington II as he shares his story with us. So let's welcome Wyatt back to the show. It's Black Golf Entertainment. On the tee with Black Golf Entertainment. On the last episode of Ready, Set, Let's Golf, pro golfer Wyatt Wordington II shares his inspiring story of growing up on the driving range, making history, and a golf lesson that solidified his passion for the game. So you told me about how you got into golf. You took a lesson, Tiger, Tiger Woods. I mean, right, right. That's like that's like Jordan lifting you up to dunk the ball. You know, it's like, <laughs> exactly. I could do it, right, right. right. Tigers give you a lesson. Who else do you want to give you a lesson but that guy, yeah. right? Um, Getting a lesson from Tiger in his heyday is kind of like, you know, touching, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, what, you know winning all the championships. It's yeah, like that's, Ali that's not going to win. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're at Mount Everest, right? Uh, especially, you know, um, a little black kid that didn't know much about golf in the sense um, and seeing what golf can bring to the table. Uh, I knew this is, you know, something I always wanted to do and, and pursue. Uh, and once I got a taste of it, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, uh, get, not get rid of it. Wyatt and Malcolm continue their insightful chat on the challenges people of color and young kids in particular experience in having exposure and access to the game of golf. I saw the bigger picture, right? And, and what the bigger picture lied was of uh, having a demographic that keep in mind that in 1961 we weren't even allowed to play golf like there was a clause in the pga that wasn't allowed for you know uh, black women uh males and, and females to play golf right so even in itself it's like wow it's it's big it's bigger than me like for the people that before me didn't have this opportunity to do that that that's huge right uh, yeah and on on top on top of that uh aspect that when I was saying I saw the bigger picture, there was a demographic that had someone to root and cheer for uh, and someone they can actually relate to. Uh, you know, that even though we, we're all human, I understand we all put our pants on one leg at a time, but it, it hits a little different, right? Um, when, when you have someone that, like I said, when you have a similar background, coming from a, a similar struggle uh, that we come from, it's just something that you can, uh, you know, cuts cuts a little bit deeper. So once I saw all these, you know, black boys and girls, you know, come up for my autograph, I was like, man, this is this is what it's really about, right? To come, to come in, bringing the next generation up, uh, having access, having exposure of, you know, what my generation or even the generation before me did, didn't have, and they didn't, they didn't even see that, right? Like before, if you look at the, just the mass public, um, people don't know the greats like uh, Charles Sifford, Calvin P, um, you know, Lee Elder, like this and that, everyone just knows Tiger Woods. And he transformed the sport of golf, right? When it, when it kind of comes to that. Uh, the equivalent of like Michael Jordan, right? Trans transforming his sport. Not also there's, you know, greats that came before him, but he set golf and, you know, made it cool in a sense where it's like, okay to golf. Because when you look at the stigma, right? of golf you think of an old rich white man sport uh if you will for lack of a better you know term of Got it. Got so it. so once i saw these black boys and girls uh had this type of interaction with me and they were you know were coming up to me and asking all these questions even though i'm like yo do you know who was just walking right there that was that was rory and you know jason day and all all these all these great people and you know they're coming up to me and it's like yo this is this is what it's all about um you know giving the these black boys and girls, uh, someone to relate to at, at an elite level, but also giving them an opportunity and access and exposure at a young age in case, you know, if they, if they inspire to, to do this, uh, go the same route. So that's what I took from it, uh, uh, more so a lot of the positive compared to, you know, the negative energy and whatnot, because, you know, if you focus on negative energy, that's not going to get you anywhere. If anything, use it to, to fuel uh, and you know, make yourself uh, you know a better person. Take the name and make it positive. So that must have felt awesome. 
those kids coming up to you wanting your autograph, you know, maybe following you around the ropes, you know, playing. That must have been like, you know. Yeah, I mean, what, what more can you I'm here, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, what more can you ask for, like, you know what I mean? And, and once I got a taste of it, it's like, yo, that's all I want, right? You know, just more and more to, you know, to touch the people and, and give them some, you know, something to relate to and hope and, and just p provide good energy. Right, like even though I know I, I focus a lot about you know uh, black people because I'm definitely you know and I'm definitely a person who roots everything black. That doesn't mean I'm anti-white, right? Because I you know love everyone, but it's like trying to just trying to knowing what I've been through. It's trying to just level out the playing field. That's that's all. Give give you know a kid opportunity and access because i grew up on a driving range right and i've never had access to play like growing up so like i said give these kids you know equipment balls like everything adds up so so quickly like and and imagine like if it was like basketball right all you need you know is a hoop and a ball like when it comes to golf when it comes to golf like you have to go to the driving range and hit golf balls and once you're out you got to pay for some more right and let alone if you actually go golfing you lose a golf ball you got to keep paying, keep paying, and go to the uh, golf courses, right? And it keeps costing, keeps costing. You go to a park and a basketball hoop, and you get the boys together, and you're good, right? That's relatively, you know, all you need. So there's a huge, huge uh, discrepancy when it comes to, like, you know, finances and how much, how expensive this, this sport is. Yeah, and I always, you know, think about that, you know, kind of, you know, where we can go with the discussion next is, you know, like you said, right? Basketball, you you don't even need a ball. You just need somebody else to have a ball. Right, right. Fast, right. Fast, <laughs> fast, <laughs> on your right, shoes, right. you have to have high tops. You know, high tops <laughs> back then. You <laughs> some shoes. Play. Whereas, right with golf, you need some clubs. You need fast. some balls. Probably, you know, gloves. Right. You know, then you got to pay for all that. Every time you want to do it again, you got to pay again and again and again. If you want to go to the places that you're going to play, like it's going to be at a, you know, it's not going to be like in your backyard. So you got to right. go and, and you got to drive, you know, 20, exactly. 30 minutes or even longer, you know, depending on where, where it's at uh, to, you know, uh, just to play, play the golf. So right. yeah, it's as a quick, as a quick. I think that because of the cost, if you think that's the primary reason a lot of Blacks aren't playing golf or don't get put to golf early on. I think a lot of us, I know me, wasn't until I was in my mid-20s <laughs> and yeah. I could afford <laughs> to play that I, you know, got into it. Um, whereas, you know, kids from, you know, inner cities or, you know, low income can't afford that every time. Your mom might be able to buy a basketball one time and you're good. Don't lose that ball. Don't lose it, right? Ooh. I can't buy another one. That not. That not, right. I got to buy clubs again or balls again. You you, 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 get, you, need, you know, I got to pay for the fees again. You know, how many times I got to pay, you know? Right. You think that's the primary reason where a lot, why a lot of Blacks don't get into golf, maybe from an earlier perspective? Uh, I think that's a huge part. I think that's a huge, huge chunk of it. Um, it I don't want to say it discourages you. It discourages you um, from going that route because it's like, well, you know, like, yo, I got bills to pay. I got to put, you know, clothes on my kids' back. I got food. To, you know, what I mean, like the priorities are, are definitely different. And when it comes to, you know, golf, even though golf leads through so many great avenues and exits, like the experiences that I've experienced. Like and the people I've met over time, like you know, there's there's this thing called social capitalism, and that and that's a huge thing, and and so and the network that you can meet through golf, it, it's it's unbelievable. But to follow back and answer your question, uh, exposure of the game has some has something major to do with it. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and and I hate to assume, but I'm guessing when you were growing up, golf wasn't like golf wasn't a cool sport to play. Like golf, like who who wants to play golf? Right, and I was, I was, in, right. I was kind of, I was kind of in the same boat. I got lucky when I got Western Tiger, and Tiger was Tiger, right. Um, so I kind of got the pass, like, oh, yes, you, you know, that's Tiger Hood, so he, he's good. Let him, let him go, let him go through, right. Um, but ex exposure, expenses, especially getting to the elite level, uh, playing in in tournaments, because the more the more opportunity, the more access and funds and resources, the better chances that you have to succeed. And, and or you can look at it the other way, the more opportunities you have to fail to learn from your mistakes to get to where you need to go. And that's, and that's, a, that's a huge, huge, huge piece that, uh, that 
I don't want to say the whole population of the black community because it would be reckless in a sense because there are black people out here that are, you know, thriving and successful. Uh, black excellence is like what I like to call them. But at the same time, if we just look at the numbers, right, and the majority that most of us uh, can't, you know, afford all these prices and things of that nature. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. it's always in my head, you know, is it the, the money side or is it something else, right? Like, and I think, you know, you know, you don't see golf on TV, like you see basketball, football, baseball, even. You gotta go to a golf channel to watch golf for the most part. Yeah, on the weekends right. it's on NBC or ABC or those networks, but you're getting, what, three hours maybe? And that's right. it, right? Whereas basketball, you can watch four or five games in one. It's in your face, it's in your face. It's all the time, face. all the time, right? right? Football is all day on a Sunday, right? Every channel right. you come to is a game, you know? Same thing maybe with baseball and things like that, you know? So. Maybe that you're right. That's part of it too. You know, the exposure and you know, being, being, being having it shown to you, you know, all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely, I can see being a big factor. Yeah. Um, there's layers. There's layers to it. It's not just one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Uh, where do you see or how do you view it now um, in terms of everything that's going on in the country? just, you know, I guess maybe perceptions or, you know, the things that are happening. Do you see golf being helpful in this sense? Do you think they're doing a good thing? When I say they, meaning PGA and just what the, the environment of golf, um, lending their voice to it. I know, and that's where I saw your, your clip, you know, was um, when they did the, um, the little special during the last PGA, you know. Yep, yep, yep. And those things help, don't get me wrong. I believe they help, but to me, I feel like there should be more, you know, mm. there should really be a lot more. And that's part of the reason why we started this, you know, black golf entertainment, just you're mm. a pro and amateur, you just picked it up. Show it to me. Let's show the world that we're out here. We belong, you know? Right. Um, right. What's your take on just golf, the golf industry or golf in general with everything that's going on now in the country and just, you know, that, that environment. So we're not throwing any lob questions anymore. We're taking the gloves off, All right? <laughs> Let's see how I can navigate my way through this one. No problem, uh, no problem. Being a little political correct, and you know, yeah, yeah. Ten tensions yeah. are high. Tensions are high right yeah. now. So I think, yeah, with, without a doubt, yeah, they, they can be doing a lot more. They meaning, you know, like PJ of America and, and things of that nature. Right? I even think, I hope, right? I hope for their sake, they, they feel as though, especially the temperature of the society right now when it seems like it's more divided than ever that they see uh when it comes to like social injustice and things of that nature they see like yo okay wait a minute this is kind of going on like there's something let's try to be the solution as opposed to the problem um so i feel as though the, the higher ups if you will um i feel as though they they feel like there's more that that can be done um and that's just universal how do we push this culture and when i mean culture i mean uh this golf culture how do we how can we push it forward and make it more inclusive and diversity uh because this inclusive and diversity has been preached to us for quite some time i'm the byproduct of it i'm literally the walking impediment of diversity and inclusion, but yet we're getting lost in translation. When I told you the numbers, when there's 29,000, only 165 of us. So uh, what will help us through the gap is, you know, having, uh, you know, just just an equality. You know what I mean? So what does that look like? We can, you know, definitely sit down and have a meeting and, and, and collaborate uh, to kind of what best speeds, you know, everyone's need where we're all kind of coming a, a one point situation because it's golf, it's golf, the sport in general is like not none other like any other sport. Because if you think you think about it, golf is the most relatable sport than, than most of other sports. At the highest of high levels, the pros are, you know, missing like four footers, right? They're hitting it out of bounds, they're hitting it in the water. It's more relatable than any other sport, right? On the next Ready, Set, Let's Golf, Wyatt and Malcolm continue their chat, delving into some key aspects of the game of golf, and Wyatt puts his pro instructor hat on and provides some important tips for anyone playing the game. Tell me what's going on now. Where, where are you now? Are you just competing now on, on, in different events? Or are you so I'm right now I'm prepping and, and you know, we're always fine tuning on the game, but getting ready for next season. World, you know, world willing, you know, that there's somewhat normalcy uh, that, that we have experienced. So, um, 
really trying to focus on the things now that I have you know time to uh, you know work on certain projects and certain aspects of my swing.